<laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, none of this would be happening without uh, without Miss Sammy. Sammy is um, the reason why the Famous Now show has moved over to the Fishbowl Radio Network, and we're very, very grateful to say we have a home. Yes, and you know, you do, we're very grateful. It was a mutual blessing. We're <laughs> grateful to you, and we'll get into that later probably. <laughs> For sure. I would like to say, uh, I know I spoke with you on Mother's Day, but I would like to say here, Happy Mother's Day uh, from the, the, ne the Now Legacy Network. We're grateful for you. Again, I can just keep on complimenting you all the oh, way through the show. You. You're such a great person. You bring great energy. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank and you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, So, transitioning into this, I'm very interested. What I'd like to say is I'd like to give a small disclaimer before I do interviews. Okay. I would love to open up the opportunity to get inside of your brain, your mind, and we dive deep into this interview. All right. You with? I don't know what you'll find in that brain, <laughs> but okay. She's with it. Let's go. <laughs> okay. First and foremost, tell us your story. Tell us your original your originality. Where are you from? So I'm originally from El Paso, Texas. Okay. I was born uh, really in New Mexico, 30 minutes away from El Paso. is a town called Las Cruces, New Mexico. Okay. I was born there. However, my parents moved like two weeks after I was born to El Paso. Wow. And so I feel like I'm from El Paso. <laughs> right, but right, I have right. a lot of family in the New Mexico area. Um, and so I grew up in El Paso, which is a border town uh, bordering the uh, city of Juarez, Mexico, okay. and then bordering in New to New Mexico. We're the farthest uh, city in Texas over there on the tip out there. So it's like we're closer to California than we wow. are to Dallas. Wow. wow. <laughs> if that makes any how sense. Many, about how many miles do you think you're probably from California? So from here to El Paso is anywhere between five or six hundred miles so it well it takes about nine or ten hours okay. and from el paso to california it takes about nine hours so okay. <laughs> and you pass arizona and other states so, so you get to see a lot of scenery along the way right so texas is big because we're you know in texas but we were over there on that little tip on that corner yeah. bordering you know again uh the country of mexico and then bordering the state of new mexico wow. And uh, further away from Houston, Dallas, Austin. Nice, nice. So did you, know. you spend a lot of time um, in Mexico? We did. You know, back then when it was safe to go over there, yeah. you know, we would uh, go over the border and go eat great food and okay. uh, shop there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the groceries were a lot less expensive. Yeah. Gas was less expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, we would go over and spend the day and, and hang out there, definitely. Cool. So from from being this this kid that's um, born and raised in Texas, basically, mm -hmm. Miss, Miss El Paso. Being um, from El Paso, your family, you started to move around a little bit. Um, you guys were in different locations. Where did you build a confidence to uh, pursue such a career? So my family didn't move around. They, they stayed there in the El Paso area forever. My siblings now, they all, as they graduated high school, they would move on to different uh, colleges around the country. My oldest sister was the first to leave the El Paso area okay. uh, when she graduated, and she got a scholarship to uh, Catholic University in Washington, D.C. Nice. She was the state debate champ in the nice. 5A Texas area. So she got uh, a scholarship there, and she got to live there and, and is still there now and um, so my brother he got a full paid scholarship uh, for golf he moved to the University of uh, Arizona nice. and played there and, and he lives in, still in Arizona, still in Arizona. Okay. Um, and so so we all lived in that area so when I graduated, I followed my sister. I went to the D.C. area because okay. we loved it. When we'd go visit her, we'd, yeah. we'd love there. Yeah, yeah. And fast forward since then, um, I, I have me me by myself. I've lived in D.C. I lived in Long Beach for a little bit. Wow. Um, and then I've lived uh, here in the Dallas area. Okay. So I moved around a little bit and uh, I started my radio career here in Dallas in 1989. I originally started it in El Paso when I was 17 years old. I was going to college at UTEP, University of Texas at El Paso, and studying journalism and broadcasting. And I was lucky enough to get that first break at a radio station called Power 102. Still Power there. It's 102. still there. 
Power 102. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, so that's where I got my uh, feet wet as far as being behind the mic. Okay. Started at the bottom with an overnight graveyard shift, and then I'd wow. go to school during the day full time and take a full <laughs> load at school. So, that's a real hustle. Yeah, so it was a hustle. It, yeah. was, it was rough. And about six months into it, I was getting tired because, again, working overnight, going to college full time, I was yeah. just, oh, my gosh, how am I going to handle this? And about that time... Um, the competition in the town for that radio station was called 93z they okay. contacted me and offered me a job to come over and work a midday shift wow. so it was quick it was quick and furious for me so i worked there for a bit and and there at 93z is where i really started learning and being what we call in the industry a radio rat that radio a radio rat? rat means you never leave the station you're just always there right you okay. love